Now to the topic of the devil, which mm. is Bill Fo Harris's focus for his four-part series this month on the show Update. Before his wedding, Zach sat down with Bill to discuss why this topic is so important, one Christians should not ignore. We're back here to finish up uh, your series, your up upcoming fourth part of your series of The Devil Exposed. Mm -hmm. And last time we talked um, about the first two sections of your series, which is um, the ultimate deceiver and then also how Satan, the origins, he sinned mm -hmm. from the beginning. And so last week you talked about the authority we have in your, in your program. And then this week will be the ultimate demise or the future yeah. of Satan. So catch us up from the third week in exactly what authority we have over Satan. Well, we have all authority and Jesus has given us the keys. And Jesus gained those keys when he was in hell. Uh, sometimes when we talk about the death of Christ, we don't go far enough. Not only did he die for us, Zach, he went to hell for us. And in, second, and in Colossians, rather, the second chapter, he actually gained uh, the victory while he was in hell. And he walked over to the devil, you know, and said, hey, the keys to death and hell, mm -hmm. turn them over. Right. And now the devil doesn't have the keys to his own home. <laughs> and so he has turned those keys over to us. We have authority over Satan. It's just that sometimes we cower and we don't understand because we don't get into the Word of God to know the power and authority that we mm. have as Christians. And so I think you hit on it right there. It's one thing to know we have the authority. How do we exercise the authority? Yeah. We exercise it through faith and through using the Word of God. Do you know that Satan has to acknowledge the Word of God? Now, he takes it sometimes and he twists it mm. around, but you see how Jesus used the Word, the correct version of right. the Word of God uh, toward him when he was in the wilderness. We also have the blood of Jesus, and sometimes when we're faced with imminent danger and the like, we can say, I plead the blood. I, Lord, I ask you to cover me with your blood so that I am protected from this imminent danger. Hmm. This is another, another tool that we have to protect ourselves. But the Word of God is, is, I think, foremost what we need to use. Yeah, and so that was from last week. The second and third parts of your series really dealt with Satan once he was cast down here on earth and his rule on earth here. And then the last part of your, of your series is going to deal with his ultimate demise, yes. the final judgment for Satan yes. and what we can expect from that. And so what does scripture tell us? Well, scripture tells us that unlike us as human beings who have redemption set for us when we accept Christ, there is no redemption for Satan. Mm. And so he will meet his final end. And in Revelation chapter 20, you will see his obituary because he will be thrown into the lake of fire along with the beast, who is actually the Antichrist, hmm. and the false prophet. Th that's the un unholy trinity. Satan, the Antichrist, or the beast, mm -hmm. and the false prophet. They will be thrown into the lake of fire, and the Bible says that they will be there forever and ever. That's God's ultimate definition of death, to hmm. be ultimately separated from God. So why would anybody in this world, Zach, want to serve or be on the side of a defeated foe, someone that's not going anywhere. Right. We need to be on the side of Jesus Christ. Absolutely. <laughs> and so you talk about in your program, a couple of events going to lead up to that point that it almost gets worse before yes, it, that ultimate it judgment takes place. And, and this leads into a series that I want to teach on next month, mm. and that would be on the end times. But we see that as we go ahead into Satan's future, there will come a time when Jesus will come back for his 1,000 year millennial reign, mm. where Satan will be bound for 1,000 years, and there will be perfect peace. Jesus will show the world the perfect peace that he talked about when he was here the last time. Mm. So when he comes, there's this 1,000 years of perfect peace as he is bound in the pits of hell. Then the Bible says plainly he will be released for a season. This is his last desperate attempt to try to convince the world to turn against God and back to him. Hmm. And then ultimately God will bring him into judgment and throw him into the lake of fire and we will reign with Jesus Christ hmm. forever and ever. Uh, and you reference revelations there and you talk, uh, they pull some out of Isaiah, also the first judgment ever passed down to him, I yes. think originally when he was cast yeah. down to earth. Uh -huh. And then th th you have five things the devil is condemned to be. He's condemned to be defeated, overthrown, humiliated, disgraced, and debased. Aren't you glad? <laughs> <laughs> that is so true. So again, you want to be on the winning side. Right. And that's with Jesus Christ. We are the winners. As I tell people sometimes, I know who's going to win. I read the last chapter of the right. Bible. <laughs> right, right. Amen. So that's what we can expect out of the series. You mentioned that you are working on a new series coming up maybe next month. Yes. Can you give us a little preview of that? A little preview. Rather than trying to deal with all of the chronology of the end times, because there's so much and we couldn't possibly deal with it in just five, sec uh, five shows, 
I want to take certain key events. I'm not sure yet. I'm in prayer before the Lord about this. Mm. Certain key events and expand on those to really open the eyes of viewers to see, you know, we are getting close to the Lord's return. Mm -hmm.